is really easy as well.
Hi everyone, welcome to hashtag AskJim48. So we're nearly at two to 50, which is good. We're nearly at half half a century old, which is really good. And we had the, the live franchisee training one last week, which is very interesting. I think we had the most interesting question. Yeah, I thought Jim's Jigglos was a good one. Yeah, Jim's Jigglos. <laughs> Out of all the questions that could win, it won yesterday. So it was very, very, very good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we award the winner. So what we said last week is anyone who likes the live stream or shared it last week, we're going to a draw for this week to win a voucher. So we tabled that all up and the winner was Marianne Louise. So she shared the feed. I don't think Marianne, I think Marianne's a member of the public. So Marianne, that was a one in, what's 50, one out of 55 chance. So you want a $250 voucher. So we'll DM you during the week. Same thing tonight. If you like the feed, if you share it, you go into that draw next week and we'll announce you right here on the show. And tonight, two, two $250 vouchers for people who leave a comment for you or a question during the live stream. Best daily rate going around, 250 bucks, not too bad, on any gym service. And we have 588 services now under, I think, 52 divisions. So whatever you need done, we're going to have it done. Okay, so let's get straight into the questions Except here. Except Jim's Jigolos, but you haven't got that one worked out we yet. Do, we do. The, the other ones we can actually do. Yeah, that's true. If you don't, don't come calling for that one. We don't have any online services for that one. It's not happening. But I'll tell you what, that was a ripper last week, and that was by Eddie, who's a new franchisee as well. So I think Eddie's starting in the mowing division, not the Jigolo division, and we wish you best luck, Eddie. So tonight, comment question, two $250 vouchers, like or share, and you go into the draw for a $250 voucher next week. We also have the hat from Instagram as well. That's a Retro Gyms fencing hat and Gyms books as well. So there's a lot of stuff there if you interact. And we've got some questions coming through now, which is great. So one that came through via the box during the week was a legitimate question. This was from Darcy. And the question was, of all the leads that were unable to be serviced, which service was in the most demand? Well, in terms of sheer number, it would be mowing um, because, because the mowing division is so large. But proportionally speaking, it's fencing. Fencing. Fencing is a horror. Fencing is about 60% unserviced. It's just an incredible demand for fencing work. Yeah, We could do with fences. Brilliant business. Teach people in eight weeks to become a fencer, and then there's so much work. So the, so the full training is eight weeks. So if you, let's say they've, they've got a corporate job, and they want to, I like the idea of running my own business doing fencing. So from eight yeah. weeks, they can be ready to go. And then start just taking the leads and put teams of workers on and so forth. Fantastic opportunity. Well, I think we had one guy from us, Jim Polizoi, when he started, he took 60, and I'm not supposed to do this, but he took 60-something leads in the first two weeks. He's, yeah. out, he's out in the West. I know. The problem is they get, take too many and they get flooded. Sometimes <laughs> they don't give the service they should, which causes problems. That's very, very true. So I've got a few comments and questions coming through now, which is great. So we're going to get to one right here. Seth Wingard, what is the most beneficial way to keep your company and our communities environmentally friendly? You guys are awesome, by the way. It's oh, very nice. There's so many things you can do. Obviously, you've got to try and reduce things like um, you know, petrol cost. Um, I reckon, I reckon um, avoiding air travel, if you possibly can, is a great one too. Avoiding air travel? I personally hate aeroplanes. Well, aeroplanes, <laughs> well, I do. I, I've always yes, have. But now, so, I've yeah. got, now I've got a little bit of reason for <laughs> travel, which is I, right. I used to be just, just scared of flying, but now I've got environmentally good reasons for it. And <laughs> so I reckon, I reckon just... just yeah. Everything electronic and email and so forth, and don't travel any more than you absolutely have to. So that's, um, that's the new one, is it? When people say, you, I, don't, I don't like flying, no, so I'm environmentally conscious. That's no, the way you go now. I'm environmentally conscious. I don't want, don't want to travel at all, all electronic. <laughs> I think it'd be great yeah. when you never have to travel anywhere at all. You can just walk everywhere that you want to go, and you can just appear virtually. You can sort of do that with what your setup you've got. You're pretty well, you, close. You can sort of do that, but, yeah. but I mean, if it's not quite the same, like doing it on Skype or something like that, but if you can actually be there and have a sort of a... The old Star Wars type Like thing, in right? Star Wars, yeah. 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 Do, you ever see, do you ever see um Big Bang Theory? Yes. With um, Sheldon on the thing when he pushes himself in the room? Was that the iPad when he's on the iPad and he had the little remote control thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That one too. But what I love was Bob Newhart. Right. Bob Newhart, who was, who was like a ghost. And he, it was all sparkly, like in Star Wars, and he was appearing, appearing on his shoes. I love that episode. I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought electronic presence would be fantastic. Actually, we just finished watching the, um, what's it, Revenge of the Sith again, which right. is great. And you can see all the all electronic beings coming in and talking. I, I love that. Yeah, there we go. That, that's the future. No more, no more air travel. And we've also got the ego stuff, which is the Jim's Going yeah. Green trail. We actually got the guy following out, so we're filming stuff. Hopefully, next actually, week you know what really after. makes me steamed up is is people who who preach and preach about wokeness and environmentalism, and then take flights in private jets, like like celebrities, um, like celebrities, like those those infamous royals, the uh, oh, yes. Harry and Meghan. I mean, yeah. really speaking, these are these are the most greeny, environmentally upfront. Holidays in private jets. They use more. They use more petrol. They pump more. 
more come up in the atmosphere than a normal 200 people would. Now, what and, they're, is, and they're preaching to us about everybody else should... should that really bugs me. The uh, child prince of Wales, he's just as bad too. Now, what do you think about them? They've obviously gone away now. This is not a question, but I've put it noted down for you. So a current world event. They've um, gone away from the royal family and they're trying to break away. It's caused oh, a bit of controversy. Good riddance. I mean, I mean, what is the point of royals? I don't know. I, I do admire the Queen, actually. She's a fine lady and very disciplined and... And so forth, but my goodness, I I, I don't know why Australia is not a republic. Honestly, what is the point? You know, you watch something like The Crown. You see them all; they're all they're all bowing and mm. curtsying and showing difference to what you know. A thousand years ago, some ancestors stormed ashore in the south of England and butchered a whole lot of local people and said, "I'm the king now." <laughs> I mean, really, come on, that's that's your claim. <laughs> I mean, what did, what did you do? What, what, did, what did Charles, Prince of Wales, ever do to, to justify everybody bowing and scraping to him? It's, mm. just, it's just ludicrous, the royalty. But for some reason, constitutional monarchies are always the most stable form well, of government. Well, it seems to work all right. I, I You're Sweden, wouldn't like Norway. Be, I wouldn't Denmark. like to be in a... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but... They're the highest living standards in the world. Canada's one. Australia's one. Yeah. Constitutional well, monarchies. It, it, works okay. work. it works okay. It's just mm. offensive. Especially when these pampered royals start preaching to us about 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 cutting back on on our on our very meager carbon emissions. That's very true. And I think it's a rotten example. It's kind of the ultimate do do what I say, not what I do. Well, Ignore you, what I do. Well, did you see the Ricky Gervais get into him at the um, Golden Globes? No, did, I didn't. I have to show you this after. I this would love to see that. He one. did say a statement. I love I love lines. Ricky Gervais. I mean, he's he's a, he's a bit of foul mouthed atheist, but still, <laughs> oh, you can say that to me. I was going to say you're going to call me that. <laughs> but I, I do I do love him. We were just watching yeah. again the. Um, the what do you call it, the invention of lying? That's, such oh, that's a, a good movie. Such a funny film. I Absolutely. love that film. You know, the, like the, the advertisements for Coke. I just love that. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's a ripper. So we'll get down to life here. Dave McDonald, who's that Mr. Antennas man who came and fixed your stuff with yeah, you. Yeah, good in, man. From yes, Horsham. He's a good man. Our, our, thank you. Our, our sound system still working, David. We really appreciate it. He's given a good question quote here. This is good. I like this one. This is very original. This is my favorite Mr. Burns quote. Mr. Burns. Now a few more details about this year's company picket picnic. It's at the plant. No food will be served. The activity will be work, and the picnic is cancelled. What is Jim's? <laughs> <laughs> very, very good. I think we could learn a lot from Montgomery. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to say it's pretty similar around here. I think so too. I mean, I've been trying to abolish Christmas for some years. My staff have this unreasonable we don't attachment have Christ- to this. Well, what we don't I have say a Christmas work party. Six, 365 days of the year. No holidays. No food. Actually, we're doing a bit better. I, I'm getting rid of the lollies and putting putting fresh fruit around. So yeah, but you're just as bad. I want everybody to be healthy. I just want them to work all the time. But I've seen you though. You've had the big home fresh box there, and you have the shortbread there sometimes. And you bypass the box and you go to the shortbread. No, no, no. The only I, I know. I'm just trying to think. Look, as a boss, <laughs> I have got to think of my staff. Mm-hmm. If I see this shortbread sitting there, tempting my staff to have sugary snacks. I eat it myself, so then I get tempted. Very altruistic. Now, isn't, isn't this altruistic? You're a very altruistic I, man. I am, I'm a man of, 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 of true compassion. <laughs> <laughs> I should have laughed to you out of that. I'm sure there's some franchisors or franchisees maybe going, where does this come from? They're going to hold you. They're going to take that clip and send it to you next time. All right, let's keep going. There's a lot of good – that's a ripping – that's a great, really good question from David, that one there. Very, very, very clever. And there's a few people going in here. Um, let me go here one more time. How's your Steph Wingard's? How's your company environmentally friendly? I think he's asked that one there. Let's well, keep... look, we try, we try, and I think we, we've all I got to go get better. That way. Absolutely, yep. seriously, it is a big issue. I mean, the planet warming. I mean, in the end, I mean, for heaven's sake, in the Cretaceous period, you had dinosaurs roaming forests at the South Pole. But, <laughs> but to get from where we are to that kind yeah, of yeah. climate would cause so much disruption and problem. Very, very we true. really should try and do something about it. And Sal, Sal John's got a nice haircut. Not bad. Actually, he's probably back to the Ice Age too. I reckon. I reckon actually reversing it would be nice. Yeah. You get colder. Yeah, I like. I cold. You like the cold, don't you? I think cold is good. I think a bit of snow in Melbourne would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let, let's do the opposite. <laughs> All right, there we go. We're getting a haircut. Let's suck, let's, let's suck out the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and we can go back to having a nice, nice ice age with <laughs> glaciers all over the place. So make sure you leave a comment or question, guys. So two people leave a comment or question tonight. David's, as I said, that's the type of question or comment that will really stand out. Two $250 vouchers from Jim's group. Just leave a comment or question. Like the feed and share it. Go into the draw next week, just like Marianne Louise from last week who shared the feed. All right, let's get to some more questions and comments that are coming in. Uh, comment from Sal John. Nice haircut. Thanks, Sal. Jim's mobile hair. Okay. Uh, here in Tasmania. My wife cuts my hair. <laughs> that's a good job. That's too. a good job. Yeah. But that's all you does. need. She does. Yeah. Seth Wingard, who influenced. Used to do it with a pair of scissors, but now she does it. Cause you, just because you used to pick it, didn't you? No, I just used to pick it. Okay. Yeah. You used to do it yourself. There we go. Seth Wingard's gone. Who influenced you to get where you are today? 
Who influenced me? Yes, to get where you are today. Uh, <laughs> see, it sounds pretty, pretty, pretty bit pretentious, but probably Jesus as much as anything else. It, it's, the, it, it's, it's Christian influence, becoming a Christian when I was 27, just before I started mowing the lawns full time. And, and that, that moral influence and, and things like the, the power of the talents, you know, what you do with your life. And, and, and the tithing, and, and, well, you give your tithing, you've yeah, been doing tithing for a long and, way. And, and also the idea of service and stuff. So yeah. probably more than any living individual, at least living on earth individual, I would say that's it, it, it's, it's Christian principles and practice, the biggest single influence. Mm. But I love reading business books. You know, I read about anybody, um, you know, Ray Kroc or... or um, you know, Bill Gates or anybody. I mean, I just, I just love reading about people who've done it. But morally speaking, I think the core of what you do is your values. And, and that's, yeah. I mean, I do all the stupid things in business, but I think my values in terms of being, of being a good guidance, because it, it, you come to a decision point, you know, what do you do about this? What well, do you think? What's, what's the right thing to do? Not the most profitable thing, the most short term, but, but what is the right thing to do? And weirdly, how often that turns out to be the best thing to do long term. So you let your moral guide, your moral, moral judgment's been guiding you in business the whole time. Yeah, I yep. think so. So there we go. That's a great question there, Seth. I didn't know we were going to get that answer, but that's a good one. We've got a lot of people here tuning in, and so it's all really, really, really good. We've got people saying they co cancelled their yacht racing and they're watching tonight, which is Paul Sandals. Denise is from bookkeeping and Taz watching with some dog wash bookkeeping and cleaners, which is great. Wonderful. That we're yes. Watching. This is really, really good. And there's a few more comments. Here we go. Did you expect your business to become this successful? So Seth's asking questions, guys, which is great. So put your questions I, and comments in there. I did not. I did not at all. As, as I've said many times, when I first started off, somebody asked me, how many franchisees might you have one day? And I said, maybe if it works well, 100. It took me a long time to figure it. This thing is really working. It just honestly surprised me. I didn't expect it. I just didn't expect it. And like I said, it's because I often make so many decisions, which which seem as though they're going to limit my growth. But then in the end, you look back and you think, well, that was a good decision. Mm. I, mean, I mean, just doing a simple thing like, like, like saying, okay, I don't care if I don't get as many franchisees, as long as the ones I've got are really happy and doing well. But strangely enough, franchisees really happy and doing well is what makes you grow. Exactly. That's the best form of referral, isn't it? They're going to say, how good is this is. thing? I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Yeah, I have a big session with, with franchisors when, when I come into training and I say, look, it's, 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 it's a myth just to take anybody and sum up and you'll grow. Right. You won't. And there's all kinds of reasons for it. And one of them is, yeah, people aren't happy. They're going to put off potential franchisees. Correct. And that's put on because we obviously, they get the list, the disclosure documents, current franchisees and say, ring them all and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I say that to everybody too. They inquire me about, about, about gyms. And I said the same thing. Just do your homework. Even with my, with my franchisors, even with my divisions, you check us out. You do your homework. And if we don't come up right, then don't buy for us. We did a day on the road with a franchisee. And I asked him and I said, how many franchisees did you talk to before you come to gyms? He said, 13. Wow, that's good. And he, I bet he's a good operator. Good. He's a great operator, Matt, Matt Thorpe, in um, Jim's mowing. Um, yeah. But 13 people he spoke to. The more research somebody does, the better they'll tend to be. That is absolutely correct. But you think about it. He might have only spent two or three hours talking to those people, but what an incredible good use of his time. That's so interesting. Like, we obviously talk about advertising for franchise inquiries, but if you look after the people there, yeah. you essentially, obviously you need to do that, but essentially they're going to do the selling for you, right? Yeah. They're happy. There's, there's work there. There's unserviced work ready to go. They're going to do it for you. So we've got a lot of people tuning in, which is great. Make sure you leave a comment or question. This is a great question from Stuart Rainbow. Thank you for leaving this question. Leave questions tonight, guys. Like it, share it. There's some three $250 vouchers on offer tonight. You're going to have a really good chance. G'day, Jim and Joel. Happy New Year to both you guys. What goals do you have for 2020? Question mark. Uh, <laughs> so many. Uh, Jim's jobs is going to be fantastic. We hope to get that going in March. Um, get that finished is important. And then start working on that. There are so many great potential ideas. Like, for example, one of the things we can do with this, if people want to know where they are and so forth, we can actually arrange, to, instead of giving a, a job, a lead to a franchisee and saying, hey, go and ring the client. If we know that they're able to take work and we know where they are, we can actually book the job in. We can say, when the client rings, we say, look, um, Joel will come around between two and four this afternoon. Is that okay? And then we send an appointment. Now, Joel can change that. I'm just using that name. It's not yeah, you, sure. of course. Joel can, if he wishes to. But how, how much better is that? Because it actually increases your chance of getting the job dramatically because there's no chance for them to ring anybody else. You ring, appointment's made. Well, the reason why I like that myself is because with social apps, you obviously have to make an appointment online. Yeah. You can do it as well. That's right. And then, it, as you said, it's, it's a way more firm hook, right? 
Yeah, so that's just one of the many ways that we can improve things. And, and with Jimbo, a franchise also can give better support. It reminds them who they're supposed to ring. They can dictate notes and stuff. Cut their more time spent talking to franchisees and doing the really useful things rather than your bookkeeping and stuff. Yeah, that's just a start. There's, there's there's a whole lot of really exciting stuff going on. I just think look like in every in every year, my basic aim is how can I make my franchisees happier and my customers happier. And and if we can do that really, really well, we'll tend to grow. Mm. Uh, mine really are just uh, keep learning in business, keep doing things, keep building what we're doing online, more videos. We did 700 since April last year, so maybe if we can get to 2,000 clips and videos, would be good. Um, Reg- I'm also really excited to get our... Re- I've got a great research head for my research program. That's good. I'm going to see them tomorrow, actually. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's got a fantastic background in epigenetics and so forth. And they're going to set up a really strong research program. We're, yeah. getting, we're getting a, a lab set up in, in, in Bandura. Right. Which is actually being, Lee's going to do that. My wife's going to do that to set it up. And then we've got our own, own dedicated lab. Yeah. And we're working through a Trobe University and, and stuff in their animal house there. So we're going to do some fantastic experiments. I'm really, really, I'm probably more excited about that than anything else, I must say, even in business terms. The potential, some of the experiments we want to do with using pheromones to actually help people to have a better attitude to life, to improve things like addiction behavior and mental health. There's some very, very promising stuff going on. And that's that's going to be really fascinating. There's a lot of stuff on. I know Stuart does a lot of marathons and stuff. And I'm sure Stuart should put there what goal you've got because I know he does a lot of marathons. He's a really, really good runner. Um, I need to get a lot more fit of myself. So hopefully that's probably a big goal. And Got my own podcast coming out soon as well, which should be good fun. So we get let through comments and questions. A lot of people are saying hi on the live feed, which is great. So we're going to try and get to the questions and comments. Eric Jurgens, who's always tuning in, he's back to his normal routine with fish and chips. He's he's gone with the comment that he wanted me to read out to you last week. So I've got to read it out here. He's done it, written it twice. I'm going to read it out right. right now, Eric. I'm going to read out the shortened version you left last week. He goes, hey, Jim and Joel, I just wanted to touch on last week's comments made by Jim about coffee. I'm very pleased to say that after a discussion I had with Mr. Penman, he has asked me to pass on how much he loves the coffee I make and that he enjoys a black coffee every day. Pause. Oh, sorry, did I did I not mention that I was speaking with Jim's son, Mr. Andrew Penman? I must say that we had a good uh, chat and what a great bloke he is. And yes, he really does love my coffee. Well, if you're going to have coffee, get get Jim's mobile coffee. I, I, that's all I can say. Yep, Jim's mobile cafe. Exactly right. Eric comes along all the time in training. He actually put it in brackets, pause for a bite from Jim, and I actually read it out. <laughs> so I know there's been a few times when we've done that when we've been squat. Yeah, funny. well. But he's, yeah, we love um, we love your coffee, Gary. And you met your son, Andrew. So a lot of people have seen Andrew walking around. He's sort of, you look a bit similar, I reckon, Andrew. What do yeah, you Andrew's staying here. I don't know, he walks very fast. The only person who walks faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> he's been staying here because yeah. he hates the heat. and is, 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 So he's been using our place to actually come from it. But he's starting to work on a, um, a PhD shortly in neuroscience. Really? Yeah. PhD in neuroscience. Very yeah. smart. He's very good on, he, he's doing a... a um, a lot of research, background research. So I'm looking forward to what it's going to say tomorrow. So it's an animal model for what we call V, which is to do with resilience and confidence. And is that so bigger? Bigger? V, yeah. Bigger. Right. Well, it's like bigger, yeah. Yeah. Cool. But it should be a very positive thing. So he's going to, he's actually working on animal models. So once we've got that developed, we can actually try that and use the pheromones for that as well. So wow. that's going to be fun. Well, all that's coming this year. Very, very exciting. So a lot of people are saying hi and stuff. We're not ignoring you. You just want to get through the questions and comments, guys. Make sure you leave a comment or question in here because they're the ones that are going to be eligible for the vouchers. Uh, particularly questions, there's been some ripping questions tonight, especially the Simpsons one. I like that one. A lot of franchisors and franchisees tuning in, which is great. Dave McDonald's gone, what was your most popular video? Wink, question mark. Um, the most popular video, we've had a couple. Um, in terms of views, the Ask Gyms always do the best. So the Ask Gyms, um, what's been really popular was the Laughing Spanish Man. And then we put your book to that Laughing <laughs> Spanish Man. Um, that was pretty popular. They got shared a lot. Um, hopefully do a few more of them. Uh, yours was pretty popular, David. We obviously had a Dog wash franchise at Jim's house as well. But there's been a few good ones, but it's generally in terms of numbers, it's always the Ask Jim's. Uh, when Jim was on Sunrise, that was pretty popular. Mm-hmm. You did a live TV show. Um, so they're the ones that are there. Hey, guys, tune in and say hi, guys. So thanks for everyone leaving a comment or question. This is a nice comment about the internal team. Jason Pollock's gone, shout out to Chloe in Documents. Helped me with the situation this week, and I'm grateful for the assistance. Yeah, Chloe's great. And a quick turnaround with information. Yeah, we, have, we have wonderful people. Worth a pay rise. So, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> Hey, listen, Montgomery Burns is not my hero for nothing. <laughs> yeah, that, you tried, Jason. You tried. And you heard Jim's, I don't know what laugh that was. It was sort of like half a fake laugh, half, I don't know. 
<laughs> that's quite a funny one there. Yeah, so, so make sure you leave a comment or question, guys. We're getting through them. There's a really nice, really good, nice one there, Jason. One from last week from a viewer, which we didn't ask Jim, which I'm going to do now, was from Mark Wainless from a, his daughter. Hi, Jim. I'm on my dad's Facebook account and was wondering if I could write a Jim's Mowing theme song. We've had we've had someone write a song before. I don't know. You can try, and if it's good, we'll we'll we'll, we'll play it for you. I just won't sing it for you. Sorry, but I, I can't I, sing. I, I draw the I draw the limit. I can laugh in public. Yep, that's very yeah very I true. I can recite poetry, but yeah. I will not sing. <laughs> the only time I'll sing is in church because that's because nobody can hear me because we all sing so loud. Okay, well there you go. Sing in church. You might forget to the church to hear Jim sing, mm -hmm. and we'll mime along. All right, so write us write the lyrics then, Gemma, and I'll definitely send that to the page or social media gyms.net and we will do it there. Actually, and there's some music festival that wants to wants to have it's an Aussie festival. They're going to want to use our logo. I've heard this. Did you, you see that? Yes, they come through the man. We thought it through gyms um, yeah. events or gyms touring. Yeah, I said it's great. I reckon. I reckon the idea of being really Aussie is is fantastic. I mean, New Zealanders think we're New Zealanders, which is good too. But still, yeah. Well, we do have. Um, I think gyms touring. Some people wear gyms touring shirts, so like bus burr boys and stuff like that. So, mm. or people at road roadies who do all the packing up. So there's a few gyms touring, but you know, who knows? Gyms events could be going. Gyms music festival with all Aussie rock bands or something that would be. I don't know what they're going to do. I just did send me the. Uh... Who would you like to see play there, Jim? No, <laughs> Gershwin, <laughs> resurrect Gershwin or something. If we can get Beethoven, it'd be good. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Dead apart from that, he's is is yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll keep going there. And Denise's ladder there, she's one of the best. So is the chick who does the training bookings pay rise too. I think from Jim's laugh, Denise, you're not getting a pay rise either there. So we'll keep going there. Make sure you leave a question or a comment in there, guys. Really good chance Look, to win I, some I, I ridiculously pay all my stuff, most of all this guy. So so no pay rises at all. Ridiculously pay was the key word. Was the key, was the key word Ridiculously there. overpaid. Ah, there we go. Yes. There we go. There we go. I'm always being told I'm too, I'm too generous. <laughs> it's going to change. <laughs> Everyone takes a twenty percent pay cut this year. Twenty percent pay cut. Gee, and no, and no Christmas. No Christmas. We, right. we don't have a Christmas. We have what well, we have. A, we have the lunch anyway you put on Fridays, but it's not like a traditional go out and to a bar and you pay for everyone's drink sort of Christmas thing. Mm. That's the normal type of one. <laughs> we'll keep going there. David McDonald's gone. The bears have been really, really busy. One sits in the van and everyone comments. The others sit near the computer to make sure I keep on track. That's it. So the bears are available. So those bears, which is behind Jim, we can you can buy them. We've actually had one person buy twenty six bears in one go. How many bears are going? The bears are all right. They just do a couple. They do their thing, a couple a day. Mm -hmm. But one guy bought all the building inspections. Tim, twenty six in one go. So there's still some bears there for your division. So make sure you do that. Paul Sandals gone. They both should get a pay rise. So Paul from Diggers is saying, <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, Paul. You can pay them. <laughs> We've heard it's a twenty percent reduction. So there we go. All right, let's get to some more comments and questions. Make sure you leave. A, I think only twelve people have liked the stream or one share. That's one in fourteen chance to win. So like the stream, share it, leave a comment or question for Jim, and we're going to get to it right now. We've got one here from Josh Hardingham. Is there any more things that you guys would like to get into? Question mark. Oh, any more services? Yeah. Any more services? Yeah, oh, we, there's lots of things we'd like to do. We'd like to have, you know, Jim's chiropractors, Jim's physio, Jim's doctors. There's lots of lots of lots of things we could love to do. Mm. It, it, honestly, we actually put our list down. We got about a hundred things on it at one time. The, ha the hardest thing is not so much thinking of ideas, even practical ideas. We get a lot of crappy ideas, but, <laughs> but, yeah. but, but finding someone to run it, honestly. It's that, the person. That's the hard part, yeah. It's the divisional person. If the divisional is good, it generally works. We're working on, what are we working on now? I think we're working on Jim's paving, Jim's roofing, roofing. Jim's floors. The, there are three good ones. So, so much work in those. We know there's so much work in yeah. those ones, and they're not that difficult to do. You know, so yeah, roofing's been the big one for years. Yeah, lots of demand, but but terrible, terrible things that go wrong. You know, and you got to go and fix it afterwards when the franchise is left. We we paid. No, no, I can't think how much money mm. out to, to fix clients up, which we always do, no matter what the problem is. If the franchise is gone, we'll fix it. But roofing's been a monster of a problem. But it's so much potential for someone who wants to do roofing. Lots of or work and very very good money. That's really good it's, money. It's a license to print money. Mm. I don't know why people want to become lawyers or dentists or anything when they could go out and do roofs because honestly, there's so much more money in it. And you get there straight away. You don't have to get the hex fee as well. Makes the money from day off. That's right. Paul's gone here. I've ordered my Monopoly game. When will we see the mock-up? Any more ideas like that coming down the funnel? Yeah, uh, where, where's the mock-up coming? Well, Jake Jake worked on it. We've, we have, we're we arguing between ourselves about the board design. I've seen your board, but I think we should go a different way with the board. So Ben's showing it up in the background, but we do have one coming, which we're going to put online once we finalise. What's wrong with my board? I think for a normal person outside of gyms, the squares, each of them should be a gym's division. They can't be, they shouldn't be services. What? No. But how does the three red ones go together? You have red red coloured divisions. What? Gym's dog wash, then you have gym's diggers. 
and you have gyms and tennis on there because people that way it gives fairness to those divisions and you get more divisions on the board we've got every division in my version we've got every division with more than 40 franchisees which is properly represented mm-hmm. with we'll talk about it we'll talk about it we've got to, it's all right it's going to be discussed but we're going to put it online What's some more ideas? Put some ideas in there, Paul. I don't know. We had that idea from someone watching Ask Gym six months ago. So put any ideas in there about gyms. What is something else? Regard. I think um, another our, sort our of... Our biggest 14 divisions are really the vast majority of who we are. I think divisions only got one or two franchisees. Uh, also, you know, what happens if they fail? Which sometimes does that's, happen with a very small division. So you've risk. got a monopoly set with, with divisions that don't exist anymore. I think it's, it's a bit questionable. I'll show you how it looks. I reckon how it looks works, but we'll, we'll talk about it after. It's not far um, away, Paul, but thanks for doing the pre-order. We've had actually around, I think, 70 pre-orders or something, 50, whatever it is. That's really good. And it's April, late April, Jim's monopoly. Oh, I bet you. I bet you they'll, they'll sell. Jim's done the board. It's Jim's board. It's Jim's cards. Well, so, I think I've done the board. People well, are starting to fill with my design. Well, we're gonna. Well, I want to just put something to you about it, but it's yeah. um, it's gonna, it's gonna. Well, let's do that as soon as possible. I think Jim's Monopoly is the world is waiting for Jim's Monopoly. I, I think I, it is. It's gonna go. I tell you what, it's gonna go viral, especially in the Aussie ads group. You know, the five hundred thousand followers they posted that they were gonna share it. Everyone who comes to training can buy Jim's Monopoly. It's gonna be good. Yes. So actually, we, Jim's yeah. Jim's diplomacy be good. You know, Jim conquered the world or something. I don't know how you do that in the gyms. But diplomacy is. Have you played diplomacy? No, I haven't played diplomacy. It's where, where you have a map of yeah. Europe, or you can do it in different ways, and you and you write secret orders, and you diploma, them, and you stab each other in the back. It's really <laughs> fun. <laughs> it's a great game. I'll show, I'll show you. Be good at it, Jim. Oh, I love diplomacy. I love just invading somebody and landing my fleets on their shores and crushing their armies. I just enjoy it so much. <laughs> We'll keep going with that I try one. to play with my, my church buddies, in my, but they're, 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 they're a bit wussy, though, some of those guys. I think they'd really be too are. nice for that, maybe, yeah? They're, they're too nice. They're too unlike nice. me. I am not nice at all. <laughs> we'll keep going there, but if you've got any ideas, guys, put them in the live feed. I think we've got a few, only a few people liking and sharing. There's Actually, three, Apocalypse is good. Anybody want to play Apocalypse? Is anybody around after training... I'll play Apocalypse with you. That is really fun. That is a nuclear war when you're blowing up Europe. I mean, that is, that is. if you want entertainment, I reckon Apocalypse is the game to yeah, play. I've played with Jim before. He likes nuking people and all that sort of stuff. It is, so it is great fun. Yeah, the Kim Jong on the back. vast nukes, and then you can, have me, the one you can, you can go that far and you go, bang, and it kills that and everybody around it. Yeah, it's, it's, and, then you, and then it becomes a nuclear devastated wasteland. It's an, old, it's an old game. It's like, what, 40 years old? How long you've had it for? It's, it's been good, Nick. It's very fun. It's very cool. I, I bought a second-hand version, actually. So yeah? Not, yeah, I, I lost my other one, sorry. You lost this. So you got another one. That's how much you play it, you lost it. Yeah, well, I haven't had it for a while. <laughs> I just don't know anybody who's sufficiently violent and aggressive enough to want to play with me. Well, I think it's, well, well that's, a, that's a challenge to people out there. If you're violent or aggressive, I should ask you. Maybe after after <laughs> after training on Monday, I was sort of who wants who wants to, to, to get involved in nuclear warfare as a, as a as an after dinner you know fun activity. I mean, I think that would be, It'd be an appropriate. Interest, be an interesting dinner conversation. The only thing is, if we played Columbus, we might lose half of them because they get so angry about being stabbed. So it's <laughs> got to be careful. <laughs> That's true. You can destroy friendships with diplomacy, that's for sure. Very, very true. So we've got some, uh, any ideas, though, leave them in the live feed. We've got uh, 17 people and one paper shared to the feed. They're at 1 in 18 chance to win a voucher. Another comment or question like Paul's there for Jim will go for two $250 vouchers at the end of the show with some books. So Eric Jurgen's gone, what's happening with the gym? I love that question. Yeah, well, it's it's Jim's gym. Is It's been approved <laughs> by the council. I mean, it only took about three years to do it. Um, so probably, hopefully by mid-year. And that'll be good. Get some of these flabby people from around here playing racquetball and swimming and doing doing good uh, stuff. Pushing weights, I think, Jim. We need to have a good pushing squat rack in there. Yeah. Be able to do some deadlifts, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Get I, you in there. I think so too. No, I don't want that kind of stuff. But we have the gym's more. personal training guy out here with the big three sixty gym. Yeah, how, 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 how many can come to that session? Uh, they didn't. People said they wanted to go, but they didn't go. I actually went down there. With Alan's Alan's a really nice guy, and Alan took me through a few things. We did some videos. And how many people turned up? No one did. No one did. They were too, I think they were just... too early in the morning. It's, it's like national conference. When you ask it, who, where do you want to go next year? They all say, I want to go to Fiji. I want to go to Darwin. I want to go somewhere exotic. <laughs> then when you actually say, okay, guys, let's put some money down. Oh, I don't want to do that. And, that, and then we all end up staying in Murabak. Well, th- <laughs> that's true. I think uh, that is what happens. It is it true. Happens yeah. Every year, they always want these exotic locations. But when it comes time to pay and put your money down, nah. Well, you've done a good one. You've done a cruise before. Cruise was fun. The cruise was good. You like the cruise. Well, yeah, it was a good yeah. conference. Yeah, because we had no external no speakers. external speakers. It was just all the all others, gyms all, right? guys talking yeah. about the things they'd done themselves. That was the best conference. 
So with the dealing with the 360, what I want to do is Alan, when he gets Jim's personal training signage on it, bring him back out here to take a session in the morning. We're going to yeah. make this compulsory staff session. About 6.30. A compulsory it's staff session. I've got to drive an hour to get here. I'll be there. Don't worry about it's it. It's too early. You'll never get them there early. No, no. Compulsory. Maybe half past eight. Or written warnings. Compulsory or written you'll, warnings. You'll not get them there. Get a bit more Mr. Burns. I remember when he took them out for the training and he was doing the whole thing and getting them to do the sit-ups. No, you'll never get them. Oh, come on. We're getting a bit of crack. So Stuart Rainbow's got my personal goals are a 100-kilometer ultra marathon in May. And business 100 to kilometers. Oh, my goodness. And he wants to get an extra five franchisees this year, and I believe he will do that. Stuart. That is, that is a goal I approve of. <laughs> Both of them. 100k marathon. Gee whiz, that's going to be a very, very big effort there. Denise gone. I agree with Joel regarding Monopoly. Sorry, Jim. We'll show, I'll talk about it with Jim after we show him. Then David's gone. I would love to have played him when I'm down. Next time I'll book in. Yeah, so book in for a game of. He wants aggressive people to play Apocalypse with. Too many yes. wimpy people, right? No, 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 no peace lovers allowed. No peace lovers around. That's right. So you want to be a bit more North Korean, a bit more Iranian, that sort of aggression, American style. Yeah. A bit more aggressive. And Paul Sanders got mobile gym was out there during training week. Check YouTube. Yes, it was. Got on there. It was really good. Alan's going to be a good fella. Dave McDonald's gone. Jim's Cold War as a suggestion. Cold War? Jim's Cold War. Hot, hot, hot wars are more fun. The Cold War? Hot wars are more fun. The Hot War. You want, you want action, not, right? not in real life, actually. In, mm. in real life, I think we fight far too much. I got very annoyed when we start, when you invaded Iraq. And it's a stupid idea. It's going to turn up worse. A trillion dollars or whatever it's cost. It's a lot of, yeah. a lot, a lot of and money. And all, all those lives, not least, but most of the people who live there. It, it's horrifying, the, the effect of those things. Absolutely. So in, in, in real serious life, I think we should fight a lot less wars. But on that game, give, him a, give Jim a but, crack But playing at war is a different thing. That's it, you do. Nobody like... gets killed. You just get your, your violent, aggressive impulses out. On a game board, instead of taking him out on people. I think that's a much better way of handling things. Don't be scared of Jim when you come and do it, just because he's the CEO and the founder of the largest home services yeah. franchise in Australia. Just, just, cause if you're, just cause if you're a franchisee and you actually stab me, I'm going to breach you. <laughs> don't worry about that. I'm just trying to think where this Or if you're an employee, you're going to get yeah. fired. But I mean, you shouldn't you shouldn't be concerned about those things. Just do what you feel just like. Just trying to think if there's a clause in the contract which we could break someone on. Being discourteous to national staff, that sort of general clause. I know yeah, sometimes could be yeah. discourteous or rude. I don't know. Yeah. Is it rude to nuke your CEO? I know. I don't think I don't think the staff around here have nearly enough fear of me as their boss. Oh, <laughs> Honestly speaking, I play I play squash with Leo and he and he and he beats me every time. And I mean, really, come on. I mean, I mean, you, you, who? Well, this brown nosing these great traditions. Haven't you ever heard of that, Leo? You've beaten your boss all the time. You're supposed <laughs> to lose. Come on. Oh, that's true. And Julie Bold has gone. Joel, your video off the call center was really, really good. That's really nice. I don't know if you've seen that video of the call center, Jim, but we actually went and interviewed a Jill and we showed everyone behind the scenes of the call center, all the great work they do, the stats, all that sort of stuff. They are, they are an amazing bunch in there. They really are fantastic. I, I'm often astonished at how, how professional they are. We don't advertise them enough, I think. So I think no. putting on the website and obviously with franchisors, that's another benefit to the It's so different because everybody else is, is, is putting their, their call centers out to the India and the Philippines Absolutely. and stuff. And, and our call center is fantastic. But in I terms mean, of cost, you say you put more on than what you probably yeah. could just because of the wait times, right? Yeah. yeah, we put a lot of effort into that, a lot of resources into that. But but our local Aussies do it, do the best job, I reckon. And they're fantastic. And I know they have a board. They've got so many 10-year employees as well, which is very rare yeah. for calls because it's a high turnover of a job. But there's staff in there for ages. They yeah. stay there for ages. It's beautifully run. Great yeah. environment. They do it good. And and, and then our, a lot of the, the top people come and work for us. Ginny's doing fantastic in sales. And we had... Um, Hannah, who was running um, Jim's Plus for us, did a great job. There's so many of our ex-people coming out of the call centre. When they come from the call centre, they are great people. It takes a certain amount of like tenacity to just keep, you know, and they do with a lot of people. You've got to respect that too yeah, because the absolutely. trouble is people get in, they get angry and they get difficult and these, and these ladies are fantastic. That's exactly right there. So I appreciate that, Julie, there. So, so David's gone, can we get a Jim's bobblehead? You know those little bobbleheads like the little Mr. Burns? Can we get a Jim's version? We probably could get one made. I just don't yeah. know the cost. Yeah, why not? We can get something made. Any suggestions about gyms this year, what we can do? I know we want to do like a big um, random max of maintenance type thing again. I know I'm a bit on to do that in some states and organize that. It'll be a big job. But I like, um, that's I like, something. I like the bobblehead. I think it's a good one. Jim bobblehead, yeah. yeah. But we have to get with the, this one, I reckon, behind us. Like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, you sit on it too. <laughs> and do that. And Eric Jurgens is going here with a question. Jim, you have been removing... Actually, you know what we should yeah. do? I reckon it would really sell well. We need a Jim's punching bag, something with my face on it. So <laughs> franchisees and franchisors and stuff get annoyed me. You can go punch, punch, punch and have a go I at Jim. I tell you what, that's not a bad idea. That's that's actually... A... I'm sure it'll be a big seller. <laughs> 
a gym's like you know those dummies they have for the boxing just have like a yeah, like a version funny. of gym and you can have them punch it and yeah, the, ones that, the ones that you knock over and come back at you which is, which is really me that's true actually I, I'm, I'm yeah. very resilient I just doesn't matter how hard I get hit I always come back what do you reckon a thousand order a thousand off them oh, I think I think they'd be they'd be hot sellers I really <laughs> So there we go. So make sure everyone leave a comment or question. There's some good comments there. I'm going to get to them now. Three $250 vouchers to win tonight. Like the feed, share it, react to it, or leave a comment. Question for Jim. And you're in the three out of whatever the chance is. It's really good. Jim, you have been removing a few of my clients lately from Jim's group. Could you check with me, please, before letting others go? I don't know what that means. What? Eric, can you just establish, uh, uh, elaborate on that? Sorry. Is that Eric? Eric Jurgens, yeah. Removing his clients from yeah. Zoom's group? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Could you please check oh, it yeah. All right, we'll keep going here. Paul Sandals, when is round two of the divisional versus divisional kickoff on Facebook? I've had that written down to do for the last week, Paul. I just haven't get around to it because of other projects. Because of the Oz Open's going, they're going so to start What do you want to do? Oh, we do like a divisional vote off because the tennis is going. So we have which division do you prefer and people can vote on which one. It's good for engagement on the page. And Diggers made it through to round two. And people like it behind the division. So you have all the gyms, people get on their division. So they are around too. So we're going to just kick that off. Hopefully tomorrow I'm going to start scheduling them in. But isn't that going to favour cleaning and mowing and the big ones? I mean, well, you never know. I think dog wash would be the, uh, my, my, is my tip. Dog wash today, Sharon sent me, is yeah. just drawn level with with fencing. In terms of franchisee numbers? Franchisee numbers, yeah. From 65 when you took it over, you've done it by 130, I think. No, that's a great um, it's a great crew to dog wash, and they're yes. um, they're going to look twenty twenty is exciting for them. So David don has gone. I get a lot of people asking where the call center is. When I say Melbourne, they go, "Wow, yeah. it's here, just up Abs- there." Absolutely promote it. We need to promote it a lot more. It's going to go on the website. Jason Jason Pollock's gone. Bobblehead on the vehicle dash would be cool. <laughs> would you buy a gym a gym's bobblehead on the dashboard? You might buy the boxing bad, Jason. I don't know, depending on mm. how things go. And Heather's tuned in there and gone. I want a gym's bobblehead. So that's nice. We're getting some customer product feedback already with your idea. Uh, ha, ha, I like dancing wobble Elvis on the dash. People like this bobblehead. Mm. Gee whiz, we have to keep it going here. Um, you should have a Jim's Easter show bag. That's an interesting idea. Easter show bag. How do you get a? What would be in that? Bobblehead. A mask of Jim, like a oh, cardboard. I guess mask. we could have a bear and stuff like that. Bear we could, could definitely do a few go in things. There. Yeah, why not? Well, Easter's coming up. Why not? And then Eric Jurgens has gone here. Coffee drinkers. Um, I think it's a good present actually. I mean, you can imagine all the Jim stuff you can give people. It's a unique gift. Absolutely, it is. something different. Jim's Jim's coffee mug. How about that? Um, I think we have to be careful because it's smashed. You know, people are holding them down, and unless you put it in the box with some bubble wrap, um, you can do a few things. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not a bad idea. Depending on how you get the bag there, though, what's the payment? What's the process? I know companies all do it, obviously. But... No, I know you, no, a coffee mug. You just wrap it up and you send it out. Do a t-shirt. What do you reckon? Yeah, why not? Yeah, we can do a lot of things. That's a good idea, actually. All right, we're going to get to a few more here. So we've got a lot of other ones on the live feed. Whoa, I've been ignoring these. Okay, James Hughes has gone, what is the current cost of a lawn round? Question mark. Yeah, a lawn round franchise? Yeah, well, his question is, what is the current cost on a lawn round? So I'd say lawn franchise, yeah. Or split, maybe. What's does, it? does it mean to buy one? I'd say to buy one, yes. Yeah, I think it's about $25,000, $30,000 worth of equipment. But it depends on the area, too. Yeah, and, and what's available. I mean, if you've got a really good business, it could be double that because it's got lots of good regular clients with it. Yeah, so um, it all varies in price, but that's roughly about the range, isn't it? Yeah, around about that sort of price, F- depending on also the equipment that you get too, and, and there's costs like training and things as well. That's very true. Now Jake McQuaid's gone. Jim snags for Australia Day. Plus, love you, Jim. That's nice. Hmm. Jim snags for Australia Day. We're actually going to do a video for Australia Day. I've got we? To, yeah, I forgot to ask you. We're going to do something about. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't favour changing the date. I no, th- no. I think the date is good. We're going to stay away from that whole thing, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a video about what do you, what do you like about Australia? You've said it a few times on Ask Jim. I just want to get into a nice video because yeah. a lot of the time when we post stuff online about gyms, everyone says it's Australian, iconic, hardworking, reliable. You know, you know something I really like? I've got it on my, on my Spotify. That's uh, the, the Seekers thing. I, I'm Australian. You know, you know that one? Yes, I do know the song, yeah. I love that one. I really yeah. do. I think it's great. Very patriotic when I listen to that. And there we go. And then Denise has gone Jim's Uno or a deck of cards. Jim's cards? I guess that would work. Well, if you've got the, you've got the right rules. Well, you'd be the king, right? So king king of diamonds would be that. I'd be the ace. I'm the ace up the sleeve. I like you the jack. <laughs> the jack, yeah, that'd be right. The comedian. Or Archie could be the jack. <laughs> that's, that's interesting too. Yeah. You, you could you could actually, you could you could give, um, yeah, actually, I know what. Instead of, instead of hearts and spades and stuff, you have different divisions. Yeah. So you could have a cleaning and you could have a mowing and, 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 and you know, why not? You could definitely do it. I think there's a merch is definitely an idea, but the thing with merch is we've got to get people to buy it. So we do do it like the bears and people buy it. But, um, I reckon I reckon Jim's playing cards would be a good one. Yeah, like, that's a suggestion from Denise. 
So it's a nice to put that one there. Because after all, the signs are pretty arbitrary. Whether it's a diamond or a spade, why not have it as a, as a division and it's a different colour? Yes. I mean, I mean, yeah. That could be very true. Now, it's a great question here from one of the lines. You've got you pictures of, of, of people in the division. That's true. <laughs> That's true. So Joel Ryan's gone here. Jim's fire preparation. Get your house ready for fire plan. Yep. So Joel Ryan's up in Jim's uh, in Canberra. So I think there's some fires up in ACT. Yeah, so still yeah going guys can do that. It's, it's a good one, actually. Yeah, it's unfortunate that it has to happen, but um, they, they can have... The interesting thing about it, doesn't matter what the disaster is, we've always got some franchisees who can, who can help out in various ways. It's amazing how many of our guys are actually off fighting fires and doing relief and stuff like that. I, I'm quite impressed. Oh, there's heaps of members in the CFA, the New South Wales equivalent, Queensland equivalent, yeah. obviously ACT, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Now, here's another question here, which Vicky Sherman's gone, what is your thoughts on improving education for our children for the future so Australia can improve? <coughs> that is a great question, Vicky. Well, there's some pretty obvious things. One of them is that is that um, teachers should be sackable. And they should be... <laughs> well, look, you yeah, think I about it. Know. Okay, you think about it. Think about it from a, from a point of view of, of franchising. If we just took anybody who applied, so you pass some test, and you can be a franchisee forever, and you never, no matter how bad your customer service is, <coughs> you can never lose it. Do you think we'd have good customer service? Mm. We would not. So saying a person's a teacher, you pass some paper for qualification and you're a teacher forever and you're unsackable, that is the craziest thing in the world. I mean, I mean, goodness gracious, I mean, it's, it's good to have your lawns mowed properly and your cows clean, but how much more important is educate your kids? Mm. So that's for a start. And, and I think that they should let classes become larger because size of class has very little input on education. But the biggest thing is, is the quality of the teachers. So what I reckon they should do is pay teachers more and give them rewards based on how well they do and how well the kids do and measure that in various ways. Mm. Yeah. Well, what about the whole thing with the gyms? Like, let's say <coughs> Melbourne, you have the private schools, so let's say Xavier and all the Scotch College, the actual teachers there write the exams. So a lot of the people, you know, want their kids to get good exams, they send them to those schools. But what about the actual learning method of teaching now? I would say, obviously, for me, the learn like sitting there and learning, you know, reading a book's not my sort of style. It's a kinesthetic sort of more learner. What do you think about the actual method of delivering education now do you think that needs an update do you think standing up there and lecturing someone let's say a boy is a boy who might like use his hands or whatever I has think, to sit well, there for I six think, hours I or think day different in kids work in different ways what probably would work very well for me being very um is is, is computer directed in a learning i'm not very social so to me if you gave me a, a course to learn you read this you answer these questions i would have done very well at that kind of thing mm. i used to hate it when they used to read aloud in class in primary school because i was always reading ahead and stuff and it was just boring 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 i didn't do very well either so i think different different people require different different systems so that's the thing so i'd like to have... i'd like to measure what rather than deciding you so some bureaucrat in in, in spring street or wherever or canberra decide <laughs> this is the way everybody should learn yeah. I think we should measure very precisely how education works, not just in terms of exam results, but in terms of how well you do in life. And you can control for things like parental education and, and wealth and so forth, and just see what's work and then pay according to that. Mm. Just like we do in gyms, we measure everything. We measure how well our franchisors support franchisees. We measure how well our franchisees support their clients. We even we even we even look at our clients to to a certain extent. If the clients bad, we won't we'll, we'll, we'll red list them. That does happen. Yeah, that does happen. That if happen. They yeah. they are bad. Yeah, I don't believe the customer is always right. Sometimes they're completely. I won't use the word for it, but they're completely wrong. <laughs> we have got you to swear so a couple of times. We order so. we order yeah. we order measure outcomes. Same thing with the health system. Okay, the trouble is we have a system which is simply paid people to give treatments to have a, 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 a time with a doctor what we should be doing is is paying organizations to maintain people's health now it might mean less doctor visits and more mm -hmm. personal training or, or physio or, or nutritional advice or all kinds of different things like that because most most chronic diseases come about because of lifestyle problems mm. i think what for me is i think they should identify early on what type of learner you're on and mm. then that forms your learning path from the rest of your school so from the age of six or whatever you get a test, whatever learning method you are, that should be where you get to well, school. Well, people might change, though. You might have somebody changing. I just think it should be based on outcome. It's too much based on, on what goes in, like a doctor doing a consultation. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the point of, of health. The point of health is how healthy is that person. And the same thing with this. Not the point of exactly how you teach a kid, but what's going to reach the best outcome for that child. For that child. Sure. And our education system is terrible. But, but not being able to sack teachers is ridiculous. It's absolutely crazy. Well, they do have a good, and a lot of teachers say they go into it for the holidays, right? 
So they go into the job because they want the holidays. Yeah. They want the, you know, that's, I don't know if that's a good attitude to have. You get, what is it, 12 weeks or Look, whatever. it's not an easy job to do. It's definitely not. To, I know. to do it well, oh. it's, it's a very, very, it's a great career. I can't think of any more noble career than being a teacher. Being a good teacher, you can influence thousands of lives for the better. And you have a big, big impact. I know teachers at school. I, I can still remember my English teacher that I had in, in year 11, year 12. Was a, he was a great guy. Mm. Um, he died shortly afterwards, actually. But I still, I still write I still remember the lessons that he taught me about how to write clearly mm. using short words, simple sentences, that kind of stuff too. It's definitely a tough gig these days because there are some unruly kids. Like you said, you were a rebel back in the day. I know. I wasn't, oh, I wasn't that kind. Of, not not the kind of rebel that would, would play up in class. <laughs> not in my school. I was, I was a bit you of a would, cl- I was a bit of a class clan and a smart aleck. No, so you, been, you, was... you wouldn't you wouldn't do that. Not in, not no, not back when I grew up in in the fifties and sixties. You get the old what was it? The old ruler or what'd you get? Oh yeah, I got caned. You get the cane, so you had the cane. And primary school, we all got caned. It wasn't. It was. It was normal. Was that the old line like that, or you had to put one behind the back, or how'd you do it? Well, sometimes they did it on the back side. Sometimes on your hand. Yeah, put your hand out and just go whack. Yeah, I know. Could not do that these days. Could you imagine that doing? No, it? you could not. <laughs> <laughs> the schools won't riot. That's true. And if I have just gone, Jim's mobile auto mechanics is. I don't. I thing? don't mind beating my kids too. I. I. I yeah, but what beating your kids? <laughs> nothing wrong. With, nothing wrong with a bit of physical punishment. I. I. I my my oldest boy, Richard. Yeah. I said that I said if he ever did anything wrong, he would he would be physically punished. But if it was a really serious, I would use two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, you've been too on about warmongering, nuking thing, all this sort of stuff, beating up kids and you come with that one. <laughs> actually actually I in, in practice I don't use physical punishment, but you don't need to with my kids. They're too Yeah, are very good kids though. They're not they're good they're, kids. They are well behaved, yeah. Very, very well behaved. So Anna Fine's gone, Jim's mobile auto mechanics, is there such a thing? Absolutely there's Jim's mobile mechanics. Mm-hmm. Then we've got Kim going here and Denise says people are suggesting Jim's tutoring. We've had like a few questions and Comments coming in right yeah, now. Yeah, so. I think I think you'd do that. I think that'd be a good one, actually. Yeah, it is good. I've got I've got somebody coming and teaching Aaron, my ten year old, um, computer skills and Manusha. She's fantastic, actually. If anybody wants a great computer teacher for their kids, Manusha is is so, great. So you're teaching him coding. Is he's it a code? coding? Yeah, he's doing right. this little little. He's actually doing all kinds of things to do with maths and drawing little patterns and making games. He does making games. What about Jim's jobs? Not, not quite, <laughs> not quite yet. I'll wait till, I'll wait till, till next month. Next month. <laughs> but yeah, he's got this little thing you showed me today where he, where you, you click on an apple and it jumps to somewhere else on the screen. And he made that. He made that. He yeah. coded it in the back end. That's yeah. good. Well, with a bit of advice and help and stuff. Yeah, that's at that age, that's great. But he's 10. Yeah. It's a good time to start. I don't know what I was doing at 10. So I, tutoring yeah. is tutoring is fantastic. It's great. I was probably chucking rocks at cars and riding a bike and I wasn't coding and making things jump. I'll tell you that right now. What are you doing at 10 years old, Jim? What can you remember? Oh, dinosaurs. I was crazy about dinosaurs. Yeah, I, like, I didn't mind the old dinosaurs. And also history too. So it's interesting yeah. actually. My academic start interest started quite early. So dinosaurs and biology and stuff and, and then history and, and, and bio, bio, bio history. What was, your, well, what was your favourite dinosaur? Animal? Triceratops. You like the Triceratops? Oh, yeah. Why, Triceratops why was that? the best. Because I had these little plastic dinosaurs. One of the reasons is he had eight different dinosaurs yeah. and the Triceratops was very stable. So when you when you're playing with dinosaurs, you knock things over so it doesn't. Triceratops is very stable. I always like the Triceratops. I always barrack when the Triceratops is fighting the Tyrannosaurus. I always I always barrack for the Triceratops. That's yeah. my, I don't know. What about you? I like the Velociraptor. Velociraptor. Very 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 clever. Very. I think Velociraptors are pretty good actually. Yeah. yeah. Very good team player. They could work in a team or they could go solo. But actually, the way they portray them in in Jurassic Park yeah. is quite right. They were probably got feathers on them. They're more bird like, yes. They're much more bird like, yeah. yes. The interesting thing is when they first did Jurassic Park, they didn't know, but later on they did discover that these were actually feathered. But then the later Jurassic Park still goes back to the early. They don't use the the modern scientific findings mm. about what they were actually like. Mm. I think it'd be great to bring dinosaurs back. I would so love to. Well, I reckon bringing back dinosaurs would be incredible. Could be another research project, Jim. You could have the Jurassic Park lab as a going as well. I reckon it could happen. Yeah. You basically got to reverse engineer. I mean, basically, a, 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 a dinosaur is an ancestral bird. Yes. So you just you just got to change a few things. I reckon you could create a dinosaur. It'd be it'd be so fun. I reckon Velociraptor, absolutely. Actually, Velociraptor was only about the size of a turkey. That's yeah, they were yeah a lot smaller than what they were portrayed, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 Steven Spielberg got them a bit bigger than they were in real life. To, That's a dramatic effect, but they, they were about, so. I don't, unless you unless you you really fear being attacked by an enraged turkey, I don't think you have much <laughs> much to fear from a velociraptor. That's true. Well, we have a we have a um, dinosaur up in the office. We have a big brontosaurus up there. Do we? Archie Hood. 
Oh, yeah. Archie's a big brontosaurus in the back corner there. People who know Archie hope he's watching at home. All right, guys. That's that's, that's like that's like the old the old riddle about uh, what's the difference between um, Jurassic Park and IBM. I don't know. Well, um, one of them is, is, is about a theme park being under, overrun by lumbering dinosaurs and the other is a Steven Spielberg movie. <laughs> That's a good joke. That's not a bad one. I haven't heard that one before. Very, very clever. So what we're going to do now is um, I think with the vouchers, so Marianne Louise won it from last week. So Marianne, because she liked or shared this feed. So right now, if you're watching, like the feed or share it because what we do is after this, I go and we scan all the names who have liked it and before next week, I will pick a name at random and read it out at the start. So Marianne Louise, we're going to DM you. So make sure you like or share the feed now. They'll get one $250 voucher, so that's a really good chance. So questions or comments, Jims? I, read a, I wrote a few down because you wanted me to write a few down because it's very hard for you to keep track of, but I thought there was two really good questions that deserved the vouchers. So the ones that I thought were really clever were David McDonald with the Mr. Burns one about the staff and what do you do for that, the, the comment. I thought that was really good because it was clever, had a punchline, and it's very appropriate for Jim's group. I like that one, David. Then we had Vicky, which was about the um, education. Yeah. I, I thought that was a great different question. I like those kind of questions. It's good. And then um, Des Ryan's going, hi, guys. You're actively demonstrating that all learning should be fun. Des Ryan's actually a bloody good teacher. We have Des. He does a horticulture course. So. Yes, he is too. too I've never seen more, one of the more passionate blokes I've seen do this stuff. He's awesome. He's great, Des. He really is. He I, gets, know, I know he's looking at the exiting gym some, one day because he's getting getting on, but, but he's, he's oh, a Des's great... Des been around for years. He's a great asset. Loves barley, Des, so I think he might... Um, yeah. Jim's mowing in Bali or Jim's Lance, Jim, Jim's gardening in Bali, Des. Well, he's done well. He's one of our early franchisors in Melbourne when we split up the state, and he's done a fantastic job. I think everyone who comes to training, even 10 years down the track, remembers Des's session here and his enthusiasm for the yeah, business, and he's awesome. Guy. And Nigel's gone for tuning in as well. So thanks to everyone who tuned in this week. So what we're going to do is if you like or share that feed during the week, even if it's after this, let's say if it's a, a day, day down the track, you're going to go on a draw for the $250 voucher. And I'm going to go through and DM a few people on the pages for the books. And the, to the person who said they're from Instagram, you will win this Jim's hat. So anyone who comes on Instagram to this, so there were six prizes uh, given away tonight. Thanks to all this, Jim. Really, really good. Lots of good discussion. Right. And um, if you've got a question, leave it during it, uh, the Ask Jim, and they'll get tackled first. Or we'll see you again next week. Okay. Thanks, guys. Done.